You're listening to The Condo Expert, Linda Pinizzato of the Hayes FM, and we're speaking with Paul Hayner of Insurance Land regarding condominium insurance. Now, that is residential, commercial, industrial, commercial, and that also will include all types, whether or not you're in a townhouse, a stacked townhouse, a low-rise or high-rise condominium, one of those strip malls, anything that's considered a condominium, that's what we're discussing. Paul, do you know... Directors and Officers Insurance, Liability Insurance. Maybe you could give us a bit of a rundown. You know, I know that, um, you know, it's based on the decisions of the board and it protects them because they are in a volunteer position and they make supposedly, you know, judgments and uh, approvals and uh, authorizations to the best of their knowledge in the best interest of the condo corporation because it is their fiduciary duty to represent the corporation as an elected director of the corporation. So sometimes you have three directors, sometimes you have five. One thing I am concerned about, and and maybe you can answer this, because to date I still haven't gotten the answer, so I'll I'll put you to task on this one. If If you have five directors, and three directors are fabulous, okay, no problem whatsoever, two directors are a problem. And the two decide now that they're going to go off and and make false accusations about the existing other three board members. How does a director protect themselves from another director? Is there any coverage on any of that? Because I still don't know. Well, the corporation is always required or should have a DNO policy to make sure that the directors and officers are protected against each other and against the corporation itself. So if the fellow on the 34th floor doesn't like the decision, something was made, and it, you know, or they they get sued for something, and this is what we decided to do. They're they're protected. Uh, another thing that people also should get is an umbrella policy, because an umbrella policy is an add-on to your liability policy. It can be purchased from a million dollars to five million dollars, and it protects you for any volunteer work you do, because most of these jobs are volunteer. Well, if you're elected, it's still a volunteer. You're not paid for it, so that if somebody sued you personally then your umbrella policy would pick up for any volunteer work you did. A lot of people don't know that. A lot of people don't have umbrella policies. But anybody who does any volunteer work, not just sitting on the board of directors of a corporation, but they coach sports, they do um, book clubs, they do anything where they're putting themselves out in the public eye, they're helping organize events, doing stuff, they should always have their own umbrella insurance because the people can still sue that individual person separately. But usually, usually the, the D&O policy will, will cover the decisions that the corporation makes. So the umbrella policy, is that something then that could be added on to the condo corporation policy? Or is that an independent no, it's, one it's, as, a, as an owner? It's of an independent. The... You add it to your own individual condo insurance policy. Mm-hmm. You can end it, add it to uh, you know, a condo, you know, homeowners. And they're not expensive. You can get them anywhere between 250 and 500 dollars for the year, up to five million dollars coverage, and it's worldwide coverage. So it's it's really it's really good for people to have that themselves in case you do, I guess, have a situation where the DNO policy, for some reason, I haven't seen any, but for some reason, may not cover a dispute between two individuals, and one decides to sue the other one. So that's uh, an, an important thing to have. Well, you know, when you use the word dispute, right now there's very limited dispute resolutions available for condo owners because uh, every condo corporation, most of them anyway, in their declaration they have it stated that if they do incur legal fees in relation to any types of things with relation to a particular unit, the board of directors has the authority to lien that unit for whatever the expense that has been incurred for non-payment. If, in fact, the condo owner says, sorry, that's not my responsibility, I'm not paying for it, that could actually balloon into a whole other issue where all of a sudden liens and legal fees and everything get attached to the unit. So that unit owner has their own independent fees that have been attached to them, but they all still have to continue to pay the maintenance fees which also embodies what the additional cost would be when the corporation starts taking on lawyers. Yeah, that's that's something that if that started to happen, then you know a condo owner would then actually have to get proper legal advice on, on what to do mm-hmm. in that type of situation because there might be certain areas where the actual policy and liability exposure might not pick that up. 
Mm -hmm. uh, and they still might just be have to pay it out of their own pocket. But for the overall, for the directors and officers that do run the uh, corporation, every corporation should have their own DNO policy. It allows for people to to get involved. Then, then you know they're not afraid of oh, I make a decision and it's not right, and somebody sues us. You know, I'm personally responsible. And it uh, you know it, it protects those people that do want to get involved. So uh, you know every every condo corporation should have it if if they don't. So, and one last thing is the condo corporation, while they're hiring service-related trades that are coming into the building, those would be under contract. So I gather that those companies that are under contract would have their own particular insurance so that they wouldn't be open to suing the corporation if the cleaner falls while they're cleaning the floors or, or that type of thing. Is that a liability issue with the corporation or is that because of it being a contracted job? it goes back to the actual company that's been contracted. The work that's done by the contractor, for whatever reason, whether it's they're in repairing furnaces or um, doing some uh, carpet maintenance or what have you, uh, they should all have their own business insurance. And then that protects them for any, any errors, uh, damage, or any slip and falls, anything that they could be sued for. So the condo corporation has to make sure that when they're hiring any contractors or any people that do maintenance work, that they need a copy of their insurance certificate. And then they also need to make sure that the condo corporation can also be added onto their policy as an additional named insured. So that way it then bypasses the condo corporation and goes straight to the uh, third party doing the work. And, and it's always important to, in a condo corporation, that the superintendent looking after the particular building make sure the people that they're bringing in to do the work all have insurance. So, you know, when we were involved in the, uh, the first process, the first session of the Condo Act review, I will say to you that there was not one individual in that whole stakeholders meetings that represented the insurance world. So it definitely sounds like the Condo Owners Association is going to move forward to put out a request to the Ministry of Consumer Services to let them know how important it is for them and for everyone in the stakeholder review to take a full grasp of this insurance uh, dilemma because right now with so many, do you know that there's like 567,000 condo units in the province of Ontario? Yeah, it's a wild. Isn't that and amazing? And you see them going up every day. Yeah. And then people will say, you know, you talk to people and say, they've got all these condos going up. Well, in my estimation, this is the new affordable housing. You know, it's, it's a starter home for a young couple. Absolutely. And they need, to, they need to protect themselves. And, you know, one thing that, you know, your association can do is, uh, you know, invite the uh, Ontario uh, Brokers Association to come and, and talk and uh, Fisco to come and talk about what's going on in the insurance world, uh, where you guys can get help and, and guidance going forward in, in, in making sure you're, that the condo corporations are protected and, and you have some uniformity of your policies and procedures in regards to insurance items and stuff like that. And I think that's really important is that the, the board of directors sets up proper policies and procedures as to what is expected from the condo owners. It's no different than a mortgage clause. Mm -hmm. Banks don't lend out the money unless they make sure, and it's a lawyer's responsibility when a deal closes to make sure that the people have insurance on their property to cover off the mortgage in the event that they have a fire. Absolutely. And you know, the condo, condo expert, this show was actually a stepping stone moving forward to get the word out. So although I am the uh, host of the show, the interesting part about it is, is that as the founder and president of the Condo Owners Association, what we would like, it, which is very important to see, is every condo owner in the province of Ontario Get on www.coaontario.com because we need you to register as a condo owner. These changes need to come about. They need to protect all condo owners. We've received some amazing information from uh, Paul Hayner of Insurance Land today with respect to condominium insurance. You know, that goes hand in hand with protecting yourself and for all of us here in Ontario, right, Paul? Is yeah, to, absolutely. We need that Condo Act to reflect changes so that everyone's protected. And then, of course, they can contact you. Did you want to maybe give out your website? Oh, well, yeah, you can reach us. At, and we do sell uh, all forms of condo insurance right from the, um, the building itself to the individual units. And we can be reached at www.insuranceland.ca. We're here in Mississauga. And we look forward to uh, giving you out any advice you need. And I thank Linda for having me here today. It's been a great day and a great talk. 
Fabulous. Well, you've been awesome. Great. Thanks. It's been good. You know, I think that uh, we'll have to get you back again because sometimes, you know, you have to keep putting it out there, putting it out there until everybody listens and understands it. And this was a stepping stone in the right direction. So thank you, Paul. Appreciate it. Uh, you're speaking to um, Linda Pinizzato from the Hayes FM, the condo expert. Thank you so much for joining in.